take a look at this screenshot that shows how much apps like we're gonna build now are making. Today, I'm building the exact same AI-powered calorie tracker app in both Flutter and React Native. This settled the debate once and for all. Which framework actually delivers better results when real money is on the line? But here's where it gets interesting. I'm not just comparing features or performance benchmarks that you can find in any tutorial. I'm building a complete production-ready app with AI integration, real-time data processing, and a user interface that could actually compete in today's app stores. Using Claude Code as my AI coding system, I'll be developing both versions side-by-side -side in Visual Studio Code, implementing identical features in each framework. By the end of this build, you'll see exactly which approach. Flutter philosophy or React Native strategy actually wins when it comes to building apps that users will pay for. And I'm not stopping at just showing you the code. You'll see the real development speed, the actual performance differences, and most importantly, which framework gets you to market faster with an app that's worth actually some money. Let's dive in. Every developer has their go-to framework. Some score by Flutter, others won't touch anything but React Native. They're both powerful, both cross-platform, and both promise to make development faster and easier. But once you start digging in, the differences start to matter. Each one has its own strengths, quirks, and learning curve. So before we start building anything, it's worth understanding what makes them distinct, especially when we bring AI into the mix. All right, React Native is built on JavaScript, which makes it a natural choice for web developers looking to move into mobile. It has a mature ecosystem, tons of third-party libraries, and a huge developer community. Development is fast and flexible thanks to Hot Reload. And since it uses native components, apps tend to feel authentic to each platform. The trade-off, though, is that the bridge between JavaScript and native code can create small performance overheads. You'll also spend a bit more time fine-tuning the design to keep things consistent between Android and iOS. And you might find yourself relying on third-party libraries that occasionally need maintenance. Still, React Native is perfect if your team already knows JavaScript, or if you want to get something up and running quickly, without sacrificing that native feel. Flutter, on the other hand is a mobile first framework built by Google using the Dart programming language. It doesn't depend on native UI components. Instead, it renders everything through its own engine, which gives it a consistent look and smooth performance across devices. Out of the box, Flutter apps tend to look beautiful with crisp animations and polished layouts, and the documentation is incredibly beginner-friendly. The downside is that Dart language isn't as common as JavaScript, so there's a learning curve. And app sizes are generally larger because of the built-in rendering engine. The the ecosystem is also newer and not as wide as React Native, so it's catching up fast. Flutter really shines when you care about visual precision and want your design to look exactly the same everywhere. So, which one's better? Well, that depends on what you're building. If you're coming from a web background and want to move fast, React Native might feel more natural. But if you want a pixel-perfect, high-performance app with flawless visuals, Flutter could be the stronger pick. In this project, we'll build the exact same AI-powered calorie tracker in both frameworks. One mobile-first, one web-first. And see how they compare when AI takes the wheel. Now, every project starts with a layout, and this one is no different. We're beginning with the structure of our AI-powered calorie tracker, the part that defines how everything looks and functions before it actually does anything. It's the visual foundation of the app, the framework that gives shape to all the features we'll build later. Let's start with the React Native version first. I'll tell Claude Code. Create a React Native app for an AI-powered calorie tracker. Build the home screen UI with app title header today's date display, circular progress indicator for calories, current calorie counter, scrollable meal list area, and a button for adding meals with camera functionality. Use a clean green and white color scheme. Build only the UI first. Don't build the actual functionality yet. Once the prompt runs, Claude Code automatically generates the first version of the layout. You can see here that we already have the full structure. A title header at the top, the current date underneath, a circular calorie 
tracker in the center, a list area for meals, and an add meal button right at the bottom. Everything's aligned and organized, giving us a complete starting point before we move into the actual logic later. Now let's do the same for Flutter, using the exact same prompt but replacing the framework. Create a Flutter app for an AI-powered calorie tracker. Build the home screen UI with app title header, today's date display, circular progress indicator for calories, current calorie counter, scrollable meal list area, and a button for adding meals with camera functionality. Use a clean green and white color scheme. Build only the UI first. Don't build the actual functionality yet. In the Flutter version, you'll notice the overall layout matches the React one perfectly. Same components, same order. But there's a clear difference in how it's presented. Flutter's built-in material design gives everything a cleaner, more consistent look straight away. The text, spacing, and circular tracker all look naturally balanced without any extra adjustments. Both apps accomplish the same thing at this stage, a working front-end layout we can build on. The React Native version gives you that familiar, web-style flexibility that's easy to modify, while the Flutter version stands out visually right from the start. For me, Flutter wins this round for presentation. It just looks more put together out of the box, thanks to its material design components. React Native can definitely catch up with a few extra tweaks, but it needs a little more prompting to reach that same level of consistency. For now, both are ready to move forward. The base layout is set, the design foundation is in place, and in the next step, we'll start improving the UI to make both apps look like real production-level products. Alright, it's time to make these apps look alive. Here, we want AI to get creative. We're giving Claude code room to improve both versions visually and see how it interprets the same design request in two different frameworks. I'm using the same prompt for both, and you can see it here on the screen. Improve the design of our AI calorie tracker. Add a gradient header background, animated circular progress with percentage, a styled meal cards with food emojis, color-coded meal type badges, timestamps, shadow and hover effects, better typography, empty state with illustration, add enhanced button styling, and smooth animations. Make it look like a premium modern health app. The moment I run it, both apps start evolving. On the React Native side, you can see it leaning into a clean and practical look. The green and white palette stays, but it's brighter, the text stands out more, and the animations are subtle. It gives that health dashboard vibe. Simple, familiar, and easy to read. On Flutter though, the AI went in a totally different Different direction. It replaced the green theme entirely with a purple gradient, which I didn't even mention in the prompt. The progress ring now animates smoothly, and the spacing between sections looks perfectly balanced. It's a little more dramatic, like something you'd expect from a polished mobile app. So at this stage, we're starting to see how AI treats both frameworks differently. React Native tends to stick closer to web conventions. Crisp line, minimalist motion, Flutter, on the other hand, feels more expressive. It isn't afraid to play with texture, lighting, and movement. I think Flutter naturally gives you that app store look without much effort, while React Native keeps things simple and fast to tweak. Personally, I like how Flutter's version came together here. It just looks more cohesive right out of the box. Either way, both designs are ready for the next step. The layouts are in place, the visuals are dialed in, and in the next part, we'll finally start connecting real data, letting users log meals and set calorie goals inside the app. Before we can make the app smart enough to recognize food and estimate calories, we need to connect it to OpenAI. That starts with getting an API key, which is basically the passcode that lets our app talk to OpenAI's system. The setup's the same whether you're using Flutter or React Native, so this part applies to both. First, head over to OpenAI and log into your account. Make sure you actually have credits available because the AI calls won't work on a free account or one with zero balance. Once you're in, create a new project and open the API key section. From there, click Create New Secret Key, given a name that's easy to remember. In my case, I will name it React Key. 
and then create it. I'll be using the same key later for both Flutter and React. For production apps, it's actually better to restrict what that key can do to keep things secure. But since this is a demo, I'll keep permissions wide open to make testing easier. After that, copy your new key and store it somewhere safe since we will be using it later when we integrate OpenAI's Vision API to power the AI food recognition feature. That's all for this step. Once your key is ready, both your Flutter and React Native projects are officially set to connect with OpenAI. From here, we're done setting things up and can finally start building the real functionality which are food logging and calorie tracking. By now, both apps look great on the surface, but they're basically empty shells. Nothing happens when you tap a button and the calorie counter doesn't really do anything yet. So this part is where the app finally starts working like an actual tracker. We're adding food logging, calorie goals, and all the little details that make it feel alive. For both versions, I'll tell Claude Code to implement food logging for our app. Create a manual entry form with fields for food name, calories, meal type, and date slash time. Set up state management for meals and daily calorie goals. Add local storage to persist data. Create a setting section where users can set their daily calorie goal. Update the progress indicator to show real progress. Lastly, add functionality to delete meals from the list. You can see here that once Claude finishes, everything connects perfectly. In React Native, the layout loads cleanly. Uh, let's try to open the settings, change my calorie target, and it updates instantly on the dashboard. Then I'll add a meal, say chicken breast, 500 calories, and lunch for the meal type and the progress circle reacts right away. Switching over to Flutter, the setup looks almost the same but with smoother motion. When I tap add meal and log the same food, the transition is softer and the UI spacing adjusts automatically. It's the kind of subtle thing that makes Flutter apps look a little more refined straight out of the box. Functionally, both versions work the same. You can log meals, track calories, set goals, and delete entries, but there's a small difference in the build process. React Native gets there faster since Flutter finishes it in about 9 minutes. Flutter takes closer to 11 minutes and needs a couple of retries to clean up some errors before everything runs smoothly. Still, it's impressive seeing both frameworks reach the same result from the exact same prompt. You can now add, edit, and track meals like a real fitness app. And now that the foundation's ready, the next step is where things start getting interesting. We'll bring AI to the mix so users can just snap a photo of their food and let the app do the rest. If you've ever tried tracking calories, you know the hardest part isn't staying consistent. It's the logging. You finish eating, grab your phone, and then spend five minutes searching for what you just had. So this time, we're gonna skip all that typing and let AI handle it instead. The goal now is to make the app smart enough to recognize your food automatically and estimate the calories for you. And we'll see how that works in both the Flutter and React Native versions. Here Here's the exact prompt we'll give to Claude Cohn. Integrate OpenAI Vision API for the AI food recognition. Here's the API key. Insert API key here. Add functionality to upload or capture food images. Show loading state while processing. Send the images to OpenAI with a prompt to identify food and estimate calories. Display the AI detected meals with a special badge and allow users to review and edit AI results before saving. Once the prompt runs, Claude sets everything up. The upload button, the camera axis, the loading state, and all the API handling behind the scenes. In the React Native version, I'm gonna upload an image of a pasta dish. After a short loading animation, the app instantly detects it as cacio de pepe. The AI then estimates the calories and fills everything in automatically. I can edit the result before saving, and once I confirm, the calories update perfectly on the dashboard. On the Flutter side, I'm gonna test it with the exact same image. This time, the AI identifies it as spaghetti carbonara, which is not exactly the same, but close enough since both dishes look almost identical. The data logs correctly, the badge for AI detection appears, and the calories reflect instantly. One thing worth noting is that the difference in results isn't because of the framework, it's just how OpenAI interprets the photo. The AI handles the same data but might give slightly different answers depending on how the prompt gets 
structured in each setup. From a development perspective, the experience is pretty even. Claude handles Flutter's integration slightly faster this time, while React Native takes a few extra retries to get the API working properly. It's interesting because in earlier videos, React was quicker, so the roles kind of switch here. There's nothing else that really stands out for me in the stage apart from the longer overall build time on Flutter's side and the extra retries React needed to get a stable result. Both end up in the same place, working perfectly. They just take slightly different routes to get there. Right now, both apps are running great. But as anyone who built an app knows, once the features are in place, the real test begins. Here, we will clean up everything under the hood, removing the random bits of code left over from testing, fixing small bugs, and making sure the app runs smoothly on every tap and scroll. It's not the most exciting part of development, but it's definitely one of the most important. Let's give this prompt to Claude, uh, clean up and optimize our application, remove unused code and improve organization, add comprehensive error handling for network issues, API failures, and invalid inputs, fix any potential bugs and issues, and improve the app overall. Claude immediately gets to work, scanning the entire project line by line. It removes old imports we no longer need, cleans up redundant variables, and reorganizes how everything is structured. It also adds better error handling for cases like failed API requests or missing data, which makes the app more stable when something unexpected happens. Once that's done, we can start testing both versions again. React Native first. Let's scan the same food image. Everything runs perfectly. The app doesn't freeze, there aren't any strange lags, and any errors are displayed clearly instead of crashing the program. Then let's move over to the Flutter version and repeat the same process. It performs just as well. The app responds quickly, the animations transition smoothly, and every action happens without delay. This part doesn't have any big visual changes, but it's the step that gives your project its final layer of reliability. We are making sure that everything we just built up until now actually works in real-world use. This is the final stretch. Both apps are complete, so now it's time to see how they stack up. In this video, I have both versions running side by side. React Native on the left, Flutter on the right. The goal isn't to declare a winner, but to look at how AI handled building each one and what the experience is like when developing with both frameworks using Claude code. I'll start by updating the daily calorie goal in both apps to 2500. The changes update instantly in each dashboard, and right away, you can see it properly reflected on both dashboards. Then, I'll upload the same image, which is a plate of Cacio e Pepe, to test the AI scanning feature. Both detected correctly, though the React version reports slightly fewer calories. The results appear almost at the same time, but React Native loads the AI output just a bit faster. Visually, both apps look solid. After the cleanup, the Flutter app's image recognition noticeably improved, showing more accurate results than before. Earlier, it kept analyzing the same image as Spaghetti Carbonara, but now it correctly identifies it, a clear sign that Claude likely adjusted the open AI parameters during optimization to make detection more accurate overall. Now, let's talk about the development experience. React Native took around 4 to 5 hours total from start to finish, while Flutter took closer to 5 or 6. React setup is also faster since you just need Git and NPM, while Flutter requires the full SDK installation, which takes a bit longer. In terms of code base size, React ended up with roughly 1600 lines, and Flutter with about 1800. The difference isn't huge, but it does show how Flutter's built in components can make the app heavier overall. Still, both handle the AI integration and overall functionality nearly the same way. Claude didn't show any clear preference, it just approached each framework according to their strengths. Flutter's UI looked better out of the box, but React Native was faster to develop and required fewer reprompts to get the features working. To wrap it all up, there's no real better framework here. Especially with AI doing most of the coding, you can achieve similar results no matter what platform you're using. The main difference lies in your goals. Flutter is great for clean, consistent visuals and animations, while React Native wins if you want a faster, 
more flexible setup. Either way, this project shows what's possible when you combine modern frameworks with AI assistant development. Both versions of the app, built from the same prompts, are proof that the framework you choose matters less than how you use AI to build with it. That's it. One project, two builds powered entirely by AI. Flutter wins on visuals, React wins on speed, but the real takeaway? AI can now build production mobile apps faster than ever, no matter what stack you use. I just built the same $10,000 app in both tools, and the crazy part is, they both got there from the same props. If you like this breakdown, hit subscribe, drop a comment on which one you'd choose, and I'll see you in the next one.